when the saints go to worship that's when the king of kings will come in when the saints go up and praise that's when the spirit shall inhabit this place when
day everyone I would like to extend a very warm welcome to each and every one of you to Envision Christian Fellowship thank you so much for setting this time aside to join us here today for worship service on this platform when we as believers with the Holy Spirit on the inside of us can come together and lift our hearts in song and prayer, amazing things can happen. Now, let's shift our attention over to Dr. Michael A. Chambers as he delivers the message for today. Thanks for tuning in on today. Once again, I'm excited that God has blessed us with an opportunity to come together to worship Him in spirit and truth. We're grateful that you're part of this experience as we look forward to what God is going to do on today. We celebrate your presence and your participation. Let us go to the Lord in prayer together. God, our Father, we're so thankful for this day. Master, most of all, I'm thankful for your darling son, Jesus the Christ. Thank you for the privilege and the honor and the opportunity to come before you with thanksgiving and celebration in our heart. God, we're thankful that you look beyond our faults and see our needs on a daily basis. It's in your name we do pray. Amen. Once again, I'm excited that God has blessed us with an opportunity to be here today to worship, worship rather, and to celebrate him and for all the many wonderful and marvelous things that he's doing in our lives. I want to invite your attention, if you will, to James chapter one, James chapter one. And I want to look at verses one through eight in your hearing. James chapter one, verses one through eight in your hearing. Scripture reads as follows. James, a bond servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Uh, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally, without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and unstable in all his ways. Scripture for today is James chapter 1, verses uh, 1 through 8 in your hearing. I want to tag this text during a semantic spotlight with this thought, and that is this. Stepping up when trouble shows up. Stepping up when trouble shows up. It was Barbara uh, Brown Taylor who tells of spending a few days on a barrier island where loggerhead turtles were laying their eggs. And one night when the tide was out, she watched a huge female turtle heave herself up onto the beach to dig her nest and to empty her eggs into the sand. Taylor did not want to disturb her, but the next day she returned to try to find the spot where the eggs were hidden. What she found instead was the tracks leading in the wrong direction. Instead of heading back out to the sea, she had wandered into the dawns, which were already as hot as asphalt in the morning sun. A little ways in, Taylor found the mother uh, turtle exhausted, all but baked. Her hair and her flippers were caked with dried sand and after pouring water on her and covering her with sea oats, Taylor fetched a park ranger who turned, who returned with a jeep to rescue her. The ranger flipped the turtle over on her back, wrapped tire chains around her front legs and hooked the chains to the trailer hitch on the jeep. Then he took off yanking her body forward so fast that her open mouth filled with sand and then disappeared underneath her. The ranger hauled her over the dons and down into the beach and the woman followed the path that the prow of, of her shell cut in the sand at the ocean's edge. He unhooked her, turned her right side up again. She lay motionless in the surf as the water lapped her body, washing the sand from her eyes, making her skin shine again. Then particularly, a large wave broke over her and she lifted her head slightly, moving her back legs as she did. 
every fresh way brought her life back to her until one of them make her light enough to find a foothold and push off and back into the water. That was her home. Watching her swim slowly and remembering her nightmare through the dawns, Barbara Taylor noted that it is sometimes hard to tell, here it is, when, whether you're being killed or saved by the hands that are turning you, your world upside down. James gives us a glimpse of the gloom and the doom of the believers who experience this type of moment, this type of misery, this type of mayhem, and wondering if it is even possible or feasible uh, to experience a miracle in the midst of all of this. I'm sure you can feel uh, uh, that way and you will not survive the travesty of trials or the tyranny of troubles, believing that your life has been turned upside down and inside out. And if there is a way out or through this moment in which you and I face on a consistent basis throughout the landscape of our lives, feeling as though our lives have been turned upside down and inside out. So what is the perspective? What is the approach? What is uh, the mindset? What is uh, our pathway forward when it comes to uh, when trouble shows up? How do we step up? when trouble shows up. I'm so glad you asked. If we look at verse number two, the text says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Note here, if you will, it is James who is speaking to the believer, to the one who's been transformed, who has been changed, who has been shifted in his perspective, who has been extracted from that moment of darkness, who has been rescued from uh, the perils of life, uh, who is now a a a part of the family of God who is no longer a stranger or an enemy of God, but he says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers uh, temptation or to various trials. Here it is, brothers and sisters. The first thing that you and I must do when we're going to step up, stepping up requires, stepping up when trouble shows up, requires us to remember the proper outlook for the trial. Here it is. Here's the part of the proper outlet looks this way. We are not excluded from the target of the trials. Notice he says, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall in various trials or diverse temptation as one rendition may share. Oftentimes, we as believers, those of us who are part of the redeemed of the blood of the lamb, then there are those who are teaching uh, this erroneous teaching as though people of God will not experience excruciating problems in their lives. There are those who are sharing that you should not be in a place of, of heavy burdens if you believe in the cause and the thrust of God. But uh, David disputes that, or Job disputes that. He says, a man born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. So it suggests to us, brothers and sisters, that we are not excluded from the targets of the trials, no matter what you may hear, what you may ever experience, because that would dispute everything that's written in the, uh, the word of God, because the patriarchs, uh, those who have walked through uh, the pathway of Christianity, show us that just because you believe in Christ, just because you have a hookup with the Holy, just because you're connected with Christ himself, it does not mean that we are excluded from the target of trials. So the first thing I want to suggest to you is to us to have a proper outlook. Number one, to remember this, we are not excluded from the target of the trials. And number two, we are not excluded from the timing for the trials. He says, notice what it says, when you fall into various trials. He says, it is not oftentimes trials, tribulations, and troubles are not on our time schedule or not when things are just, just right in our lives, that oftentimes those trials will show up unexpectedly. Those trials will show up when you least expect them to arrive. But it says here in the text, it says, 
when you fall into various trials to suggest that we are not excluded from the timing of the trial. It may be at the most uh, opportune time in your life. It may be at the place where you are soaring, at the place where you are uh, rising, or at the place where you have moved toward a, a moment in time of possibility and probability, and then this shows up. But in order for us to have a proper outlook, we have to understand that we're not excluded from the target of the trials, nor are we excluded from the timing of the trials. And here it is. We are not excluded from the type of trials. He says the various trials. He says we have no clue what type it will be. It could be a challenge with our health. It could be a challenge with our family. It could be a challenge that's on the job. It could be a challenge, if you will, with our financial well-being. It could be a perplexing moment in time as it relates to the family dynamics. It could be some issues that may arise amongst our friends and our cohorts and our associates. You cannot pick. You cannot choose because it has a multiplicity of, of approaches as it relates to the various types of trials. Brothers and sisters, here it is. It is Charles Swindoll who said the best. He says, he says, the longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. This is about a proper outlook for the trials. Attitude is more important than facts, is more important than the past, than in education, than money, circumstances, and failures, than successes, than what other people think or say or do. It's more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will make or break a company, a church, a home, or an individual. The remarkable thing about uh, uh, we have a choice every day, regardless of the attitude we will embrace for that day. We cannot change our past. We cannot change the fact that people act the way they act. We cannot change the inevitable of trials and tribulations and troubles in our lives. The only thing we can do is play the one, the one string we have. And that is our attitude. I am convinced that life, this is Swindoll, that life is 10% of what happens to me and 90% of how I react and respond to that. So it is, brothers and sisters, we are in charge of our attitude when those moments of difficulties, when those moments of despair, when those moments of depression, uh, when those moments of decline have a tendency to rear its ugly head. One is we have to have the proper outlook for the trials, brothers and sisters, no matter where you are in your life, no matter what's happening, what's occurring, it's going to happen. It will show up. It will come in a, a, in a time period that may be the most uncomfortable and sometimes it can be relentless. But understand that it is your proper outlook and understand that we are not excluded from the target of the trials. We're not excluded from the timing for the trials, nor are we excluded from the type of trials. Here it is, brothers and sisters. Uh, not only should we remember to have the proper outlook for the trials, but we also must remember the profitable outcome from the trials. Listen to verses three and four. It says, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be complete, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing, verses three and four. So secondly, uh, you, you and I can step up when the trouble shows up, when we understand and remember the profitable outcome for the trials, the benefits, the advantages, the blessings, the perks, the pluses, the assets from the trial. Here it is. As you look at the text and it says, let patience uh, have its perfect work. Patience is uh, this word does not describe a passive waiting, but endurance. It literally means to remain under. It has the picture of someone under a heavy load and resolutely stand there uh, instead of trying to escape. It's a frame of mind in which one endures. Why? Uh, number one, to ensure uh, spiritual reliability. Here it is. It, it, it's, it ensures spiritual reliability, that, that you are reliable, but it also ensures, ensures spiritual stability to remain under, not to fall apart at the seams, 
not to give up or to throw in the towel, not to rip the moment apart and believe that life is over, life is done, life is uh, has this exclamation point, it has this period. But I want to suggest to you, brothers and sisters, that oftentimes troubles, trials, and tribulations, it's not a period, but it's a column. And in the midst of that, it is it's a place where we are able to gain spiritual reliability, gain spiritual stability, and gain spiritual maturity. And sometimes God cannot uh, help us and assist us in that moment. And he is not trying to ground us, but he's trying to grow us. He's not trying to mess us, but he's trying to mature us. He's not trying to condemn us, but he's trying to convey to us our way forward. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you've ever noticed this, that no plant, no flower, no tree lives in this earth, remains in the earth, remains in the soil without experiencing moments of rain, wind, sun. Stars, but the most important thing to understand that oftentimes that the, that that plant, that shrub, that rose, that tree, that bush needs the combination of uh, water, rain, cultivation of the so uh, of the so of of the soil, the sun, so that it can appropriately and properly grow. There is a reason that. That even in the midst of the season changing, there is a budding of the flowers, budding of the trees to suggest that the season is changing, to suggest that it's time for growth, to suggest it's time for something to be produced. Brothers and sisters, here it is. Uh, it is Samuel Rutherford who says it best. He says, when I find myself in the cellar of affliction, I always look around me. For the wine, when we find ourselves in the cell of affliction, our wine is what God is doing in our lives and what he will do for us as a result of the trial. Remember Jesus the Christ who was in the Garden of the Gethsemane, Garden of Gethsemane. It is known as the crushing place. It is a place where they would, would crush the grapes in order to produce the wine. But the, the, there is no production of wine without the crushing of grapes. And so that's what I stopped by today to tell you, brothers and sisters, that sometimes in life, the things that we go through, the things that we experience, God wants us to remain stable. He wants to remain reliable because he wants us to mature because he's trying to produce something from our lives. Here it is, brothers and sisters. Stepping up when trouble shows up. Thirdly, it's a perfect, remember the perfect outsourcing for the trials. Here it is, verse five and six. Listen to what it says in text. It says here clearly, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally, without reproach, it will be given to him. Verse six, but let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. But notice here, if you will, he says, if any of you lacks wisdom, he does not say knowledge, but he says lacks wisdom. And even in the crushing moments, even in the challenging moments, even in the perplexing moments, you need clarity. We need good judgment. We need to have a discerning moment, not to be moved by how we feel, not be moved by our emotions, not to be moved even by the context but to consciously seek the hand of God. No wonder, no wonder when you think about the Chronicle writer, when it says that when we were faced with enemies, when we were faced with the onslaught uh, of the enemy at the doorstep, the Chronicle writer says, after going through fasting, after going through prayer, it says, but uh, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Even as you think about the psalmist, the psalmist who was going through the places and spaces uh, on his way to Jerusalem to a time of worship and celebration, oftentimes he was uh, attacked 
or had the possibility of being attacked and assaulted. But he said, I will keep my eyes upon, uh, upon the hills from which my help comes from. It was an image of the presence of God. He said, so I'll turn my eyes toward God. Brothers and sisters, even when we think about from the book of Esther, in that moment in time, she received insight, spiritual intelligence on how she should move forward and waited to discern what God was going to say about the moment. Even when Moses was in a perplexing place and he's down at the Red Sea or the Reed Sea and trying to determine what way to, which, what was the way that he should move forward, the Bible says he went to God and he did not move until God told him to move. But here, let me caution you here, yeah? because sometimes when God is telling us to move, we have missed the moment that God is telling us to move and we will wait and we will wait, we will wait and we will wait. And God has already given us the green light, but we have stuck our lives up under the caution light. But here it is. He says, Seamus, he says, remember the perfect outsourcing for the trial, a faithful pursuer of information. That's God. God is a faithful in the information. He's a faithful provider of the information. He's a faithful protector of the information. He shares what he says. He will give it to us liberally. When was the last time you asked God? When was the last time you inquired of God? When was the last time you laid it at God's disposal to ask for direction? And when you sought his direction, you looked and sensed the move of the Holy Spirit. When to move? And brothers and sisters, Perhaps your outsourcing is going in the wrong direction. Perhaps you are asking too many, too many people, but you're failing to ask God. Maybe you are Googling answers and trying to find answers on the social media platforms. But God says your outsourcing should be to God and God alone. He says, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And once you become tune, in tune with God, and once you turn your station to God, once you realize that it is all the information, all the, uh, the information that's necessary to move and maneuver in life comes from God and God alone, after you pull in all the resources and after you hear the written word of God as to what needs to happen and transpire in that moment. I do want to tell you that there, there are oftentimes we're waiting on God to jump down in our lap to make a move and to make a, a, a step forward when oftentimes God has already given us the answer, but we've allowed fear to keep us trapped, paralyzed, and relegated to that place and space in life. God says, Chamber, tell them that here he is. He is a faithful giver of information. He's a faithful provider of information. But he would also protect you when you pursue and receive that information. Here it is. One writer says the best. I do believe that it was Thomas Chisholm that says, he says, who coined the following words. That God is faithful. And if you go to him and looking for an answer, looking for a solution, he is faithful. No wonder Thomas Chisholm, Chisholm said the following words. He says, great is thy faithfulness. So God, my father, there is no shadow turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions. They fail not as thou been there. Thou uh, forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. I, all I have needed, thy hand has provided. Great is thy faithfulness unto me. Brothers and sisters, God is able to give us exactly what we need at that moment in time, just when we need it the most. Brothers and sisters, stepping up when trouble shows up, not only should we remember the perfect outsourcing for the trials, but finally, 
we need to remember the paralyzing obstacles in the midst of the trial. Here it is. He says, he says in verse number six, let him ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of sea driven and tossed by the wind. Look at the illustration. Look at the metaphor. Look at the analogy. When he talks about doubt, because doubt is a tactic. It is a strategy of the enemy. It was doubt uh, that showed up in the Garden of uh, Garden of Eden. It was it was Satan who who worked on Adam and Eve, and his design was to create, to embed, and to plant that seed of doubt. That is a tactic and the strategy of the enemy. But understand this. Remember the paralyzing the paralyzing obstacle when you're in the trials he says is that when you when you allow doubt to shift your thinking when you allow doubt to stop your transformation when you allow doubt to trip you up in life and understand this that doubt is a part of the enemy and the tactics and the strategy of satan himself why do you think that when he showed up with jesus when Jesus was in a very challenging place, a difficult place, and he went into the desert for 40 days, 40 nights, it was Satan that tried to show up and create doubt in his understanding about the word of God. But God, Christ, if you will, combated that moment of doubt by showing up and bringing up the, the, the word of God as is a printed. And so all Satan tries to do is if he can create that moment of doubt, it is designed to trap you, that doubt is designed to traumatize you and it's designed to trip you up. That is the paralyzing obstacle that often you and I face when we're in the midst of that moment. But brother and sister, here it is. But notice what he says, for well, let him not, the man suppose that he received anything from the Lord. He's a double-minded man and is unstable in all his ways. the doubt, and then he talks about the man's de demeanor, and stable, unsure, not confident, going with the moment. But James says that this is a paralyzing obstacle that can show up in the midst of the trial. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, let me share this with you. You can step up, stepping up when tr the trouble shows up. One, if you can remember the proper outlook for the trials. Two, if you can remember the profitable outcome for the trials. But three, remember the perfect outsourcing for the trials. Then finally, remembering the paralyzing obstacles while you're in the midst of the trials. But let me close by telling you that airplanes take off by overcoming the resistance of gravity and wind. Yet once they become airborne, that wind lifts them higher. Trials have a way of lifting us higher and higher. Trial are part of God's way of helping us mature spiritually. And that's what I want to tell you on today. To allow the tragedy, the travesties, the moments of life to lift you higher and higher. That's where God expects for you to be. Stepping up when trouble shows up. May God bless you. May God forever keep you is our prayer. Pray that you've been blessed by this moment and you've got, gained some nuggets to navigate you through a phase or a challenge in your life. Up on that screen is my email address. Uh, email address. We do want to encourage you to let us know that you've accepted Christ as your personal savior or you made a shift and change in your life. 
So we do want to encourage you, my brother and sister, to be mindful and to be cognizant of that moment. Wherever you are in your life, we want you to trust him and believe in him that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly all that we can ever ask, think, or dream. So let us go to the Lord in prayer together. God, our Father, we're so thankful for this moment. We're thankful for this opportunity for us to come together to share, dialogue, discuss the written word of God. We pray, oh God, that you change our minds, transform. We're praying for that individual who says that I'm unsaved, unchurched, but I desire to reconnect with Christ. And God, help them understand how simple it is to admit, believe, confess, and confess that you are the Lord and Savior of their lives. And then God help them to understand what Romans 10 says when it says to confess with our mouth. The Bible says, thou shalt be saved. But also help them understand that it is a gift in which the Apostle Paul talks about in the book of Ephesians. It's not, uh, it's not something that we have to work for, but it is by grace. It's a gift that's given to all of us. An opportunity. All we have to do is accept and believe and confess that you are the Savior and Lord. Then God, we're praying for that individual that's out there today that may have disconnected for whatever reason in their life, but they desire, they feel the unction of the Holy Spirit. They feel the pull and the draw of the Spirit of the living God, drawing them back to you. Pray, oh God, that they will change right now, shift right now, move in a new direction, cover their lives, give them what's necessary to deal with this moment in time, to start life afresh, to start life anew. It's in your daughter, son, Jesus the Christ's name we do pray. Amen. And thank God. Once again, I'm excited that God has blessed us to come together uh, to be able to share the dialogue and to give you moments of nuggets uh, when we think about stepping up when trouble shows up. May God bless you. May God forever keep you is our prayer. As always, walk with the King and be blessed. Thank you, Dr. Chambers, for being obedient and delivering God's word to God's people. You can join us here on this platform every Sunday at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock a.m. and at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So many people has asked the question, what does partnering with Envision Christian Fellowship consist of? It consists of daily prayers, weekly teaching and preaching, monthly encouragement from the ministry team. You also gain an authentic relationship with the ministry team. And if you desire additional pastoral services, they are available upon request. Other ways to partner? You can partner through praying with a team of committed ambassadors of Christ affiliated with Envision Christian Fellowship monthly. You can partner through serving with a team of committed ambassadors of Christ affiliated with Envision Christian Fellowship quarterly. You can partner through connecting with local, regional, and international nonprofits. And you can also partner through giving consistently to Envision Christian Fellowship either weekly, monthly, quarterly, or annually, and you can contribute through Cash App or PayPal. And all of the information you need is listed on the screen. Again, thank you all so much for joining us here today for worship. We hope that you all have enjoyed your experience. Next time, we would love for you to have someone join you. We hope that you all have a blessed day and stay safe. Bye for now.